Okay, next. This is a great question. Can only artists be graphic designers? Or do you have to be a great artist before you can be a great graphic designer? Well, I'll bet that you have some kind of artistic background or some kind of a, a visual or creative element to your to your character makeup which draws you naturally to the field of graphic design however there's a huge misconception the the term artist or the role of an artist and the role of a designer they're oftentimes used synonymously i'll see this a lot of times when i'm talking with executives or or the client or or the boss whoever's in charge Oftentimes you'll hear them say something like, just send it down to creative, send the project down to creative. What do they mean by that? Well, when they're using the term creative, they're referring to the graphic designers or the graphic design department. So instantly that presupposes that the graphic designers are all creative. We're going to send it to the artsy people and they're going to figure it all out. However, these two words really don't mean the same thing. Let's take a closer look at this. First of all, let's discuss exactly what an artist is. An artist is someone who has their own personal creative vision, and they're working to fulfill their own creative expression. So, in other words, they're not trying to solve a problem for their client. They're not trying to create a project that has a specific purpose other than their own creative expression. And they're going to take this this vision that they want to express, and they're going to put it down on paper, they're going to put it down on canvas, in sculpture, or in any other art form that they want. Now, artists aren't graphic designers, although many artists make use of design techniques in their own work. Composition and visual communication and forcing the viewer's focus and so on. Just look at some of the greats throughout art history. I don't need to name the names. We all know them, right? Picasso and Michelangelo. I love the Baroque period of art personally. That has a lot of graphic design elements in it, in my personal opinion. But in any regard, that's really what an artist is all about. Okay, now what about on the graphic design side? What's a graphic designer's role? What is the job of a graphic designer? You know what? Fundamentally, a graphic designer is a problem solver. So in other words, they're going to take the goal of the project, whatever that goal could be. It could be a, a sales piece. It could be brand awareness. It could be some kind of a special offer or perhaps functionality in some kind of a, a digital interface, something like that, and bring the project from a rough concept all the way through to final completion, solving the problem as efficiently as possible, okay? Now, graphic designers are not artists, although many designers are artists in their spare time or have a background in the visual arts. Many people with a background in the visual arts, as I said just a moment ago, are naturally drawn to this field of graphic design. A graphic designer must brainstorm efficient ways to solve a particular problem the problem of the project at hand. Again, whatever the purpose of that project is, whatever the message of that project is, they've got to creatively and efficiently solve the problem and then create and present a variety of solutions, oftentimes to their client, and then they have to have the technical skill to actually build those solutions. A graphic designer oftentimes has a blend of many, many skills, including skills like marketing, problem solving, as I mentioned, creativity, a, a creative flair, visual communication skills, and of course, the technical skill to pull off their solutions. So I'm referring to software skills, for instance, understanding and knowing how to get around inside applications like Photoshop and Illustrator, coding skills, they know how to code HTML and CSS, for instance, and web design skills, knowing how to work with web servers, setting up web servers, installing WordPress and running WordPress, things like this. So a graphic designer, as I say, has a blend of a variety of skills. And oftentimes when they're working on a project, they're wearing more than one hat at a time. Okay. All right. Now, a graphic designer is always dealing with practicality and function. An artist, on the other hand, doesn't have to consider how practical or how functional a particular piece is. Of course, art is expression. You know, to really hammer home the difference between an artist and a graphic designer, let me show you two quick examples. An example of art, an example of personal expression, and an example of graphic design. First, the art. 
This is Marcel Duchamp's bicycle wheel, and it's about the most extreme example of what comes to my mind, at least, in terms of what's considered art. Now, whether it is art or it's not art is certainly up for debate. This piece has certainly created a lot of controversy since it was first created in 1913. However, we're not here to debate whether this is art or not. This is simply an extreme example of an artist fulfilling his own personal vision. So Duchamp didn't create this piece at the demands of anyone other than his own artistic vision. And hey, that's great for him. It doesn't mean the rest of us have to like it or dislike it. That's entirely up to the viewer, of course. Now, of course, art is full of examples of controversial pieces that push the boundaries of the definition of the word art. And some would say that's the purpose of art. But clearly, this particular piece has no purpose or actual functionality other than the artist's own personal expression. Now onto the graphic design. Here's the logo that gets painted onto the sides of trucks of a company called, you guessed it, Two Men in a Truck. Maybe you've heard of them. Is it ugly? Perhaps. I suppose it depends on your definition of ugly. But I'm giving you extreme examples here to hopefully drive home my point. Whether this is visually pleasing or not is completely beside the point. And this is really what I'm trying to drive home for you. Do we know instantly what this company does? Do we know why we should care? They're two guys, they have a truck, and they care. They're movers who care. We know right away exactly what it's all about. So if we know instantly what this company is and what they do and why we should care, then it's a successful piece of graphic design. Sure, it could be a little bit tidier, but does it have to be tidier in order for the company to be successful? Not according to two men and a truck. So there you go. There's two extreme examples for you. One that's fulfilling an artistic expression and the other that's filling a specific purpose for a successful company. To help you along further, I'll share with you something that I came across a few years ago and I thought it was a really great metaphor. Consider the difference between a sculptor and an architect. A building could look beautiful from the outside, but if it serves no purpose, if it doesn't fulfill its function, then it's a complete failure and a complete waste of resources. The same holds true for a website or a flyer or a brochure or an ad or some kind of a, a piece of marketing, okay? A sculptor, on the other hand, again, is all about personal creative expression. Their particular creation, their particular project doesn't have to serve any other purpose other than looking beautiful and fulfilling the artist's own personal expression. Okay, now here's something else to help you along the way. The misconception is that great design, fantastic design is flashy, it's eye-catching. Here's the metaphor that I want to use for you on this particular issue. I want you to think about some of your favorite movies, movies that really had a deep emotional impact on you. Now, consider the latest summer blockbuster loaded with stunning special effects and thrilling action, and compare those to the movies that really touched you or really made an impact on you personally. Most of these thrilling summer blockbuster movies don't have much in terms of a story or a meaning, and frankly, they often don't mean much. Here's a quick example for you. There's a fantastic film called My Dinner with Andre. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's an older movie. You have to check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. The, the aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 90% approval rating, My Dinner with Andre. The premise of the movie is two people having a conversation in a restaurant. That's it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. No flashy CGI, no special effects, no giant monsters rising out of the sea or anything like that. Now, compare that to the summer blockbuster that was Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. I didn't even bother seeing it, it but the trailer looked amazing. The trailer looked awesome. Thrilling special effects, huge explosions. It was insanity. Rotten Tomatoes rating, 19%. <laughs> so the, the real point that I'm trying to drive home here is that the designs that you're going to be building are not going to be based on special effects. They're going to be based on serving a purpose and solving a problem. That's really what it boils down to. Okay, now many clients who hire graphic designers want something flashy that will attract a lot of attention 
We often see this with business cards, satin finish paper, letterpress with gold foil, all this kind of crazy stuff. Sometimes the client, however, needs to be reminded, do you want to look really, really good or do you want sales? Do you want to solve your problem? So sometimes as a graphic designer, you need to remind your client or perhaps your boss if you're going to be working in a firm that really fundamentally graphic design isn't about looking awesome. I gave you that earlier example of two men in a truck. It wasn't flashy. In fact, it was anything but flashy, but it solved the problem and it filled a purpose. So the most successful designs efficiently handle the problem that they were created to resolve without drawing attention to the design or to the special effects itself. Again, you may want to think of some of your favorite movies that did have some special effects, that did have some thrilling action, but the effects or the, the action or the CGI didn't take away from the overall story. To me, a successful design doesn't rely on special effects. Same with a movie, by the way. All right, now everything on top of the function of solving the problem so things like fonts, colors, imagery, special effects, drop shadows, embossing, and so on, is all icing on the cake. The fonts and the colors that you choose, the special effects that you decide to use, are not the design by themselves. That's critically important to remember. Good design functions very well and also looks visually pleasing, or perhaps better said, it doesn't look displeasing. Think about that. I know two men in a truck didn't necessarily look pleasing, but it solved the purpose and it solved the problem, so it didn't necessarily look displeasing. So said another way, it doesn't have to look amazing, it just has to not look terrible, if that makes sense. So form is always going to follow function. So hopefully I was able to efficiently give you a sense of the role of a graphic designer and how that compares to the role of an artist. And again, we have this misconception in the field of graphic design that all graphic designers are artists or come from an artsy background. Don't forget, fundamentally, graphic designers are problem solvers.